Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking about the upcoming pattern and a lot of that cold that could be making its way in on two different occasions, as well as a small portion of some warmer weather as well. So there's going to be all sorts of stuff going on. Now, before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do think about the related content, and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. And I'd also highly recommend that you check out our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below, and then also our very awesome channel membership that's going to be located next to that subscribe button anyway for today's comment of the day i want to know do you think that march will be mostly dictated by some colder weather or some warmer weather and if so where do you think that'll be located let me know in the comments down below and i'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video now let's get straight into this video and first things first we're taking a look at our european models temperature anomalies and this is going to be for well 7 p.m yesterday actually so we're taking a little bit of a look back and as you can see we've been kind of in a little bit of a colder period here for the eastern united states also the western United States, but then the central United States has been dealing with some quite pleasant warmth. If you're up there in that warmth, let us know how it feels. I'm sure it feels quite nice after some of the colder times you guys have had this winter. Now, as we move towards about 6 a.m. this morning on Sunday, March 7th, you can see, again, colder than normal conditions there for the eastern United States sticking around, and then also the north central United States dealing with those warmer temperatures sticking around, and then the western United States Again, seeing the colder temperatures. Now, Monday by 6 a.m., you can see it's a lot of the same. That's going to be March 8th. And as you can see, we have those colder than normal conditions, even colder by this point than it has been uh, for the southeastern United States all the way up through New England. We see those warmer than normal conditions prevailing in the north central United States and then colder than normal conditions out west. But what we're going to do is we're going to move on towards Tuesday and then Wednesday and then beyond. And we're going to see that pattern flip big time in just a moment. Now, by the time we're talking about Tuesday at about 6 a.m. here on March 9th, you can see that the southeast is still dealing with those colder than normal conditions, but the warmer than normal temperatures have pushed further eastward here, and they're even reaching into New England and the northeastern United States, where there's going to be, again, just some quite nice temperatures, really, to say the least. The west is getting even colder, probably a sign that we're seeing some negative PNA conditions move in, which usually means that a few days from now, the warmer temperatures will really be uh, over the eastern United States, and we're going to watch that happen. As we push towards about 1 p.m. on Wednesday, you can see that that has occurred. We see far below normal temperatures, actually, for the west out there, and then far above normal temperatures here for the plains, the upper Midwest, the Ohio Valley, the Great Lakes, and even in through the mid-Atlantic all the way up through New England. Those browns are indicating about 15 to 30 degrees above normal, so very far above normal temperatures, actually. For the high temperatures there on Wednesday. Let's take a look at what those uh, temperature anomalies would look like on screen. You can see those numbers there. So we see some like 17 to 20 to even 25 there in upstate New York degrees above average. So we're seeing far above normal temperatures here by the time we're reaching Wednesday. Let's take a look at those actual temperatures real quick, see what that could mean. And widespread 60s uh, with some 50s for some of those far northern regions. But yeah, widespread mid 60s lower to mid 60s for a lot of the ohio valley uh, and the northeast as well obviously new england and the upper midwest it's going to be a little bit colder than that because your average temperature is so so much lower but nearly 70 there for a lot of regions in the southeast even 70 uh, for florida portions of georgia louisiana and texas now what we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to move on towards thursday and beyond and watch this pattern play out how long will the warmth last and when is that big cool down coming in all those things are coming up in just a moment All right, now by the time we're reaching about Thursday at 1 p.m., you can see it looks very similar to Wednesday, actually. We have a little bit of a cold front coming through, but it's not enough to push you guys to colder than normal conditions yet. That cold front, you can really see the dark red turn into lighter oranges there for Kansas, Missouri, and Illinois. You can probably see where that cold front is located there. That could be associated with some thunderstorms, obviously, as we're reaching into the upper 50s and 60s. That's going to be when we're talking about the potential for some thunderstorms once you reach into those temperatures. But still very far below normal temperatures out west and very far above normal temperatures in the east. By the time we're reaching Friday, it's a lot of the same, but you can see that now it's basically mostly for the extreme east coast there. None of the inland states are dealing with these above normal temperatures anymore, or the far above normal temperatures at least. So that cold could be making its way further east in just a moment. And by the time we reach about 1 p.m. on Saturday, March 13th, you can see that we actually do have a little bit of a breakup in those above normal temperatures. None of those browns are around anymore. We do have the darker reds there for the Gulf states, basically, and a little bit of the southeast. 
uh, in some far below normal temperatures set up over the four corner states, and that extends in through Texas and Oklahoma as well. And it's kind of like a strip of those cold temperatures making its way all the way to Virginia. Very interesting there. That's probably where the cold front is located. And in just a moment, we're going to take a look at that far below normal temperatures that are going to move in. An Arctic blast that's actually going to be very potent for this time of year is coming up as well. So by the time we're reaching about 1 p.m. on Sunday here, you could tell that there's a huge Arctic blast that comes in. We're going from far above normal temperatures just a few days ago to on Sunday, far below normal temperatures. Look at those uh, kind of blues in there. We have two shades of blue going on. I call the one that's in the middle of the green kind of purplish blue. Some people don't think it's a purplish blue, but that's what I call it. And that's where we're at about 15 to 30 degrees below normal in the same areas where we were dealing with like 20 to 30 degrees above normal. So that's like a... 40 to 60 degree flip it's just going to be massive uh, and we're going to be dealing with possibly some very potent cold air by the time we're reaching sunday march 14th for many many regions and look at that some warmer than normal conditions out west with some colder than normal conditions for the southwest that's going to be a neutral pna most likely uh, when you see the cold in the southwest and the warmth in the northwest, that's kind of a confused, not a very strong uh, anomaly there for the PNA at all. And by the time we're reaching about 6 a.m. on Monday, you could tell that this is a full blown Arctic blast. I mean, green's widespread, which is 10 to 15 degrees below normal. It's going to feel quite potent. But look up in New England, even those magenta shades starting to show up. That's where we're at about 28 to 36 degrees below normal Fahrenheit, which is very far below normal. Uh, it's going to be quite extreme, and by the time we're reaching about 6 a.m. on Tuesday, you can see it actually has really died down, and we see some warmer than normal conditions entering into a lot of the Ohio Valley, the Great Lakes, uh, and likely they're going to make their way east eventually. So what we're going to do is we're going to move on towards 7 p.m. on Tuesday, where we will see those warmer temperatures return out east once more. Now again, here we are by about Tuesday, March 16th at about 7 p.m. here. And as you can see, those oranges and even some of those darker oranges have returned to the eastern United States. The north central United States is actually far below normal temperatures. Same story with the southwest. And then the northwest is above normal temperatures. So again, that PNA is likely in a neutral phase at this point, but the eastern United States is dealing with those warmer than normal conditions. Now, what we're going to do is we're actually going to take a look at our European ensemble model, and we're going to compare that to our GEFS, which is our GFS ensemble model. And we're going to compare those two in daily increments. But first, here is the first day. So this is like this morning through tonight. And as you can see, for the most part today from the time I'm making this video on Sunday, March 7th, we're going to be dealing with those colder than normal conditions for the eastern seaboard as well as the Gulf states and as well as also the, nor the northwest and even the southwest, but mostly the central United States and especially the north central United States dealing with the above normal temperatures. But as we take a look at the five days that follow that, you can tell that it's a very strong negative PNA pattern. We have very far below normal temperatures out west and very far above normal temperatures in the central and eastern United States from the 9th through the 14th. So we're going to have a very nice five day period here of some very nice weather. Uh, we're averaging about 8 to 14 degrees above normal in those darker reds there for the Ohio Valley, the Great Lakes, and the Mid-Atlantic up through the uh, New England states as well. And then we're averaging about 10 to 15 degrees below normal in those greens out west. So a very strong cold west and a very strong warmer east. Now, by the time we're reaching the 15th through the 20th, so a five-day period after that, you can see mostly cold air is going to dominate afterwards uh, for the five-day period that basically follows that. Uh, so we're going to have these massive flips, but that's a very strong, um, this model is very confident in that is what I'm trying to say. So here's the GEFS model, the GFS ensemble model, and here's day one. It obviously agrees. Usually day one is very, very easy to forecast, but here's that five day period afterwards, the 9th through the 14th again. And as you can see, colder in the West, warmer in the central and Eastern United States. This is almost a carbon copy of that European ensemble model. That's a very good sign that these models have great agreement at this point uh, and that this is a legitimate pattern that we're likely going to be in. When you see both of these models completely agree, that's a very, very good indication that this is what we will be seeing. But by the time we're taking a look at the 15th through the 20th, this model also agrees that cold air will dominate. This one says especially for the central United States, whereas the European model had that entering much further eastward. But overall, there will be colder air making its way into the central and eastern United States as we reach the 15th through the 20th. And beyond that, well, it's more of a question mark. So here's the driving 
factors that are causing this to happen. We're going to take a look at our European ensemble model, but they do agree on what's going to happen. Here's our PNA. In a negative phase, we're taking a look at colder than normal conditions out west and warmer conditions out east. And then in a positive phase, it's the opposite. In a neutral phase, as I mentioned earlier, it's more of like you'll see colder in the southwest and then warmer in the northwest. That's going to cause it to be a lot closer to neutral. Uh, and that kind of uh, allows for a multitude of different patterns to occur out east. Here's that PNA forecast on this chart. And as you can see, we're going to be strongly negative by the time we're reaching the 10th. We're heading negative now. We will be strongly negative by the 10th. Uh, that's going to cause some warmer than normal conditions out eastward. You allow that to lag for a few days. So you give it about a two or three day lag for those effects to be felt. So the mostly negative phase will be felt most around the 11th, 12th, 13th. And then you can see we go positive by the end of the 13th and around the 14th. So around the 15th and beyond, that's when we will be seeing those more neutral PNA effects all the way through the 22nd there. The AO, when this is in a positive phase, doesn't allow for that Arctic air to enter the United States. But when it's in a negative phase, more of that Arctic air comes in. As you can see, we're going to be strongly positive. But by the time we're reaching around the 15th, we get a lot closer to neutral all the way through the 22nd. I also think that's why more cold air will be making its way in. Anyway, for our confidence tab, we're at a four out of six. Obviously, these two ensemble models agree very well. So that's allowing for me to be a little bit more confident, even though this is partially a medium to long range forecast here. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, how many severe weather events do you think we'll have in the month of March? And Boris Davidov said, probably like two or three severe weather events. And I definitely agree that we will have some activity, but I think this is going to be generally a pretty average March as far as severe weather goes. Uh, if not a little bit above average, April and May is when those things usually start to set in a lot more. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons. Sebastian Tao, John Ben Benick, James Wade, Dovi Nagel, Alan Belemo, Adam S., Larry LePan, Donna Carnes, Cameron Marshall, and Aiden Mattis. Alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Alan Sherry, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Michael Buell, Cap Bite, Charles Stinnett, Kellen Manhart, It's Jay, Cindy Klein, Mark J., Luke Flago, Garys, and John Quilisi. If you would like to be a part of this patron end screen of the day, you can do so by joining our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.